boot up your console, what was your impressions when you first uh, went through the setup? <laughs> that was his impression at the end. I mean, for me, like, like it was pretty quick and easy um, getting everything started up, like connecting my existing account and all that. Um, I will say, like, if we're going to start to get into it, just like having the console. Yes, booted up we're and all starting that, into it. Yeah. Um, I loved that, especially after I'd linked my account, like my whole library, everything mm -hmm. was there yeah. ready to download. Like yeah. whatever game I had that existed on my Xbox One X was ready to download on my Series X. Um, and I thought that that was really cool. Um, I liked that, how convenient that is. Um, and I just... I jumped right into it. I downloaded, I got Red Dead 2 on there. I know that that's going to be mm -hmm. a big one to test in terms of like load times and all that. Um, got my hands on Watch Dogs Legion, of course. Uh, okay. Still waiting to play Assassin's Creed. I'm really looking forward to that, though. Um, I know, Dan, so though, good. you've gotten to play like a bunch of different stuff and gotten to do like a lot of testing and, and the loading and everything has been something very uh, interesting. I saw your video that you posted. <laughs> like quick resume mm. is the coolest feature. This wild, console yeah. Awesome. oh yeah for sure mm -hmm. so so my like yeah. and, and a, few, a few people were replying to my tweet about it that like obviously the quick the fact that and camille were talking about before that the fact that the quick resume is you can hard you can unplug your console and quick resume yep. like it'll remember where you are which is incredible and like that's like those are those are two hands of the incredibleness like that's incredible too but like i when i when i put that tweet out i wanted to showcase that to me what was impressive was that it's not like it's because that's one thing to save that one game you're on but to save multiple games is a whole other level of impressiveness that's, that like, and that's yeah. what I, I, I think that's. most people understood when I was showcasing that it's like, cause again, we've seen that in a lot of, you know, saving one game and just rebooting it really quickly is, you know, it, it almost, it barely feels different than, you know, putting a console sleep mode and coming back on kind of that yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Right. But mm -hmm. being able to just like, and when I showcase was I was playing Forza, just like in a full game and I'm like, Assassin's Creed and I switch over and I'm just back right, 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 right like that. Nothing does that. Yes. Not that we've never seen that before. Like, that's just yes. crazy. It's like in five seconds. Yes. Like, Your PCs don't even do that. Like, yeah. as no. far as I know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like a, a nut about that stuff. But as far as I know, like even even your PC is not really capable of some things like that. So this is uh, this. I, I've said this to a couple of people, and I think uh, I think I back this up now 100 percent when I say that this is probably the biggest jump we've had in tech from one console mm. generation to the next. Um, just in terms of like the technology and the sheer power of the consoles, not just in terms of fidelity, but now having right. the SSDs, having something like quick resume for the series X, it's a game changer, you know, mm -hmm. to have the ability to unplug my console, maybe bring it to a friend's house mm -hmm. and boot it up and be playing Assassin's Creed and load in to the literal exact moment where I was last playing, not from like some saved checkpoint, not like having to boot up the game and start it all over again. No, literally, I click Assassin's Creed and I am where I was standing the last time I was playing it. That yeah. is insane. And to then yeah. be able to do that for multiple games, that's crazy. That's so cool. Yeah, have you yeah, guys I think, tried? I think you touched on, uh, I was just going to say, I think you touched on a, a great point there is that it's, this generation isn't just changing how games look or how games play. It's just quality of life all mm -hmm. around. The fact that, to boot up the console takes like two seconds mm -hmm. before by the time like you grab your controller hit the xbox one you blink and it's on at the dashboard and you're yeah. just in there and then yeah that extends all the way through to, to quick resume that you can have five games up in stasis and select which one play for 15 mm -hmm. minutes bounce to the next one it, it's it's it, it's awesome and it's something that you didn't even think about going into this generation like oh why would like how is that a major selling point well once you have it yeah it becomes a major selling point right yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and and to me that's that's the future of of consoles right now right is that yes. like we're only seeing these these incremental increases that you know the, especially this year where it's like there really aren't those killer apps right like you have those right. things i mean you got your spider man's so like there's things that are like that are really cool but like without you know like in terms of xbox right you don't have your halos you don't have these games that are like whoa these are like genre defining game changing right there's a lot of neat stuff like cyberpunk isn't even launching with anything right like there's there's nothing very clearly like this is the one that's going to change everything and you need yeah. to buy the new console to experience it so because of that you know it's this weird middle ground where it's we have a slight upgrade um you know slight might be underplaying it certainly it's it's a, a relatively major upgrade but because the, yeah. the it's the games themselves that you know in this happens with every console that we're not gonna for, for we're not really gonna see these consoles like full power 
for another few years. Uh, and that's same with like 360. Like even 360, like look at the, the juice they were pumping out of Xbox 360. By the end of life, we're like some of those games, I can think of like Halo 4, like Halo 4 for its time on 360. Like you play now, you're like, how the heck did they make this game on 360? Like yeah, they, they, they're going to do incredible things with these consoles in just a few mm -hmm. years. But when we see that, I don't know, is Cyberpunk going to deliver that for us? We don't really know yet. Like things look great, but we're, we got to wait for those like killer yeah. apps and those, those brand new games like made for these consoles to be like, mm -hmm. whoa. I agree and that's with you. the thing. Yeah, I and, feel and I like last, last gen. Week. Yeah, sorry, ahead, sorry, Chris. Yeah, I feel like you're absolutely right. I feel like last gen was, or what we've seen previously was all about how far our graphics can be pushed, right? And we've reached a point where yep. we can't really do any more than that. Especially now, you have to have a 4K TV to really, really utilize any of that technology, and you still have a lot of gamers that do not have that, right? Mm -hmm. So how are you going to push in other ways? And it, it's such a refreshing time because now they're looking just outside of graphics. What we, can we do? And with Xbox, with quick resume, like that is one of the smartest things. And, you know, Dan, you mentioned it before. We were talking about this before the podcast started. I had a power outage um, when I was playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla on my Xbox Series X. I was pissed off because I was on a roll. There's like this dice game that you play. It's a mini game in, the, in Assassin's Creed. And I won like three times in a row. And I, I thought I was going to get my fourth win. And my power went off, shut down my Xbox, and I was freaking out. Loaded up my power, my Xbox Series X when power came back on, and it resumed right where I left off in the That's middle awesome. of that mini game, and it was it was just so refreshing because I had to change how I look at things. Like. When you think power outage and playing a game, you're like, oh, that's it. It's over. Like, I'm going to lose that file. I'm going to have to replay that level. You know, you think all of those things. It just shifted my perspective. I'm like, oh, my God, no. Like, I could just pick up right where I left off. Like, why didn't we have that before? There must have been the technology to do it. And maybe the demand from gamers wasn't there, right? I think we were so fixated on graphics. That's, that, that's what a lot of companies uh, focused on. Now that they have, they can't focus on that anymore. They're expanding outside of that, and now they're showing us other things that we could be excited about. And quick resume is one of them. I don't know if any of you actually tried how many games you're able to quick resume at once. Did you? Did yeah? five? Not five was mine. I think it's like five. five. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Just insane. And wow. You, you no, know, I I think the argument because some people don't understand the benefit of quick resume. And for me, who's getting busier with work, um, you know, and life in general, like a lot of us, who sometimes play multiple games like at once. So, yeah. for example, um, I'm still playing Watch Dogs, but then I'm also starting as well. I started playing Assassin's Creed. So I go back and forth between those two games. Mm -hmm. For me, Quick Resume is like the perfect, perfect uh, tool for that, for me to just pick up where I left off without having to really think about what I was going to do next. Because for me, especially when you're playing an adventure game or like any game that has any RPG elements to it, you like, you plan ahead. I was like, okay, I'm going to go see this guy before I do this mission. But then you have to leave the house or something comes up, you got to go eat. You turn off your game and then you walk away. And then you come back a few hours later and you're like, crap, what was I supposed to do at this moment? What was I supposed to do? Now I could actually go to that mission, just leave and come back and I'm right in front of that guy like mm -hmm. you know like so you really don't have to think too much of where you want to leave off now you just have to think of when you want to take your bio breaks because everything boots up so quickly <laughs> <laughs> no seriously seriously it's it's the it's the coolest feature for sure about the Xbox Series X I know that there's a lot of talk about well we're waiting for the games you know and and that's sure. that's certainly an argument to make is that the Series X especially not launching with Halo has put it in a position where you can play Assassin's Creed, you can play Watch Dogs, but those are cross generation, right? You can play those on on any console of your choice. Um, but I will say, having quick resume, if you're somebody who's not like living and dying off of exclusives, you know, if you're not itching for Spider Man, uh, if you're looking for games like Assassin's Creed, like Watch Dogs, or you know, just if you want to if you want to try and uh, do some backwards compatibility with stuff like Red Dead Redemption or GTA Five, like having quick resume will be one of the coolest features for you like to, yeah. to experience in next gen having the ability to jump between those games in the snap of a finger and end up in the exact place that you left off is a really awesome thing and so again if you're not living and dying off of exclusives i would recommend a series x uh i know that there's a lot of talk as well about the series s and the storage uh, or lack thereof yeah. 
Um, but again, having a small console, the ability to just be playing one game at a time, having the SSD loading things up real quick, that's nice too. So overall, like, is the Series X worth it at launch? Like, if I'm if I'm saying, you know, do, do you get this right away? If you had the opportunity to. I'm not 100% sure, but I'd say if you're looking forward to a couple of games that are going to get some major upgrades for next gen that are cross-generation, I wouldn't not recommend it. You know, having the ability to to see these games at the at the best that they perform, mm -hmm. having that quick resume, having a couple of the other features. that I, For me, I love the interface of Xbox um, sure. and their consoles. Um, I think that's all worth it, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, I, I, I also, think. No, go ahead. Dan. So also preparing for the like crossplay, right? As that becomes more and more common, that it, it's going to be very valuable to be up to speed. Literally, it, to me, in that case, it's less about graphics and more about load time. Um, and that's something that you know, as I've tested so far, it, it either matches or you know, even like it, it rivals uh, PC in some cases, depending how well optimized the games are. Like you're on a, a really awesome SSD that they have in the console, uh, and I play a lot of crossplay already. Games like Sea of Thieves, where we'll have a team of four people, mm. um, and you know, everyone will be on different kind of hardware on consoles, on PC and stuff. And you know, we're all beholden to that one person who is the slowest, who is on an mm. old Xbox or right versus mm. the PC players. Um, and right. being able to like in a game like Sea of Thieves where seconds do count where if you're you're dead you're waiting to come back to your ship your ship's sinking like you got to be the first one back there has to be the one saving the ship and the longer you take to respawn the more chances you are going to lose as a team and so having right. that like yeah. one player on there that is kind of like slowing you down is is brutal sometimes and so I I do think in many cases like this is to me it's got to this point where it is it is rivaling a PC for many reasons uh, and that's that's you know I it, it, it even for me who is a primary PC player I am now excited to finally and this kind of usually happens with every generation but i feel like more so now with this one that there are games that i'll just be like i'll get this on console right like i'm that's how yeah. i feel about assassin's creed right um assassin's mm -hmm. creed i think is it's one of those games that is very clearly made to be played with a controller to be yep. played in like a console setting it's most optimized there right and then i can just like i just get it there you know get the achievements play on xbox like you know play on different like, around my house and like different uh locations and stuff like i think I, I think it's it's at a very nice point now, and I think they're going to continue to optimize and create ga great games that work this way. That'll just be like, you know, play play on PC, play on console. It doesn't even matter at that point. I, that's a comfortable place to be in, I think. Yeah, and yeah. I, and I feel like with Xbox, particularly, like they are providing a lot of people with the best budget options mm -hmm. for what you can afford. Um, so I know for Steve, you, you have the Series S, which is the okay. more, more affordable option to next-gen gaming. Um, but it doesn't have that 4K ability, right? So do you see, like, in terms of what we're seeing with the Series X, what is your impressions of the S in terms of if it's the, the best option for next-gen? Or should you just wait and, like, save up and then buy a Series X? I think it all has to come down to like who you are as a player. Um, if you're that person that needs that like cutting edge tech, loves 4K, um, needs like the increased storage size and all that, yeah, definitely go with the the Series X. But the the way I look at the Series S is that it's an optimal Game Pass machine. Um, uh, we brought up the the limited storage size it, on the box. It says 512, but in reality, I think it's like 346. Uh, after like the OS and system files and all that, it's not great. But if you're coming in, downloading like a couple games off Game Pass every month, or because it's a digital only machine, you're just downloading a couple games every month and then kind of sw swapping through them. That's totally yeah. manageable. You're just not going to have your full library on there. So you have to ask yourself, is that important? Um, also, it has you, that same slot in the back for the the card, right? The, yes. Uh, okay the the right. external ssd but then you also get into the conversation of well if you're gonna buy that you might as well mm -hmm. just buy a series x if you're investing okay. an additional 200 dollars on top of the console price right might as well just pay like another like 100 dollars and get the series x I, I believe um but at the end of the day i still think that it's a super great entryway just into the xbox ecosystem and that's what microsoft's all about it's bringing you into the ecosystem um, just the next gen ecosystem in general like yeah. it's, it's yeah. cheap console and and i do agree i mean yeah like obviously you want to have like one terabyte be able to download like sure. 20 games and have yeah. them all accessible easily but at the same time you know if you're somebody who who plays one game is and is done with it after you mm -hmm. play it then like yeah just go get game pass or get whatever games you want to get whenever you finish them uninstall them go to the next one like 
I feel like that option is totally available for you. And for, for the, the price of the console, um, it's, it's not too bad of a, of a workaround. Yeah, uh, Hunter Slasher 13 in chat says that they're getting an Xbox Series S and it's going to be their first Xbox ever. And nice. and you're you're absolutely right. You two, you you hit the nail on with the hammer there. Um it is the best entry for Xbox. If you never had an Xbox console before, you could get this console, the Series S plus Game Pass and you have a crap ton of content that you could play uh oh. for for years. <laughs> like <laughs> there's so much that you could play there and with you know, optimize for Xbox, you're still going to get the or Xbox Series X, you're still going to get those titles on the Series S that mm -hmm. you could play that are backwards compatible and that are have those um, rendered uh, graphics that are going to make it look beautiful on the Series S, which, which mm -hmm. is good, right? Like we discussed before at the start of it, it's much more than just the graphics, right? It's the smoothness, the, the mm -hmm. high performance. And I feel like from what I've seen, Steve, you're still getting that from the Series S. No, exactly. You're just not getting 4K. Um, yeah. But at the same time, if you wanted to get, like, say, if you had the TV that's capable of it, four, or if you wanted to get 120 frames per second, you would already have to dip down the resolution anyway to something comparable with the Xbox Series S. Right. So at the end of the day, you're not taking that big of a hit. Um, so uh, again, I, I think that's it's a great machine, and I'm shocked at the pricing of it. If you compare it, if you go back and compare it to the Xbox One, which cannot compare in terms of power yeah we're already paying upwards of like 500 dollars. granted you were buying the connect as well in that box but the fact that you're getting something for a fraction of the cost that can run this well is shocking yeah. to me. listen for me uh i think pretty much ever maybe maybe when i was a kid this was something that was important for me but for me now graphics are the the last mm -hmm. uh, like on the bottom of the list of priorities yeah. when it comes to a game that i'm excited about Obviously, I want a game to look good, um, but some of my favorite, like, for instance, one of my favorite games of all time, Borderlands or even Tales from the Borderlands. Sure. Um, these are games that, like, by definition or by standard, don't necessarily look amazing graphically. They have their own style, but they don't look, like, incredible, but it's about the gameplay and it's about the performance. And what these next-gen consoles can provide in terms of performance, uh, especially if we're talking about Borderlands, Borderlands 3 had some issues on console i think it still has some issues mm. on console i'm really excited to try it on a next gen to see what those issues are they're gonna how they're gonna perform now or how the game is gonna perform now because i know that on pc a lot of the problems that i had even playing on an xbox one x were like non-existent and so if we can have the power or even a fraction of the power of a pc put into a console now i imagine that a game like borderlands 3 that initially suffered a little bit on console will just perform like it should you know and so having the SSDs and and as well, just being able to load into a game in like two seconds is awesome. You know, even yeah. without quick resume, like putting quick resume aside, I can boot up a game and get into it fairly quickly. You know, mm. you've seen a lot of the comparisons online. I downloaded Red Dead 2, although there's still, it's a Rockstar game, so it's going sure. to take, <laughs> take a minute to load into, but it's significantly faster mm -hmm. than if you're playing on the current generation of consoles. And that's awesome to me. Yeah, I, I started my playthrough of Watchdog Legion on the Xbox One X, and that game pushes, I would say, upwards to a minute, over a minute, in, in between like fast travels. Um, switching over to even the Xbox Series S, that goes down to like 15, 20 seconds. Such an mm. improvement. Yeah, that's so it, great. That's the thing is that, that we're seeing in this transition is that, sure, you're not getting that killer app. Like, obviously, I have a Halo-sized hole in my heart right now, but it's just the fact that it's going <laughs> to... It's just going to improve all your games. Every single yeah. game that you have on Xbox One right now, they're going to be improved. Yeah, Dan, what else have you been playing? What are, like, or what else have you been testing out? Uh, what else? Uh, my, like you, you got Watch Dogs. You got Assassin's yeah, Creed. Yeah, uh, I haven't tried. Watch You've been Dogs playing Sea of Thieves. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, play, I tried tried a bunch of Sea of Thieves. Um, not not heavily. More just kind of like ran around and checked it out. Um. Honestly, most of my time has been spent on on Valhalla. Like I've played mm -hmm. a ton of Valhalla. Nice. Um, it's it's just so fun. <laughs> like I'm I'm just having cool. such a good time I... on that. That uh, yeah. I, I'm I don't think I really spent much time on anything else. Really, those are my those are my heavy hitters. Forza, a little bit of Forza. You noticed you noticed in Valhalla, and I'm not too sure if this is attributed to the Series X in particularly, or just you know Ubisoft how they created Valhalla. But I find the load times in terms of when you die, that was one of the 
heart aching things of any Assassin's Creed game is loading back in and sticking in that animus screen mm -hmm. with your character just walking around in the dark. Oh, yeah. Takes forever in Odyssey, mm -hmm. takes forever in Origins. I found with Valhalla, time is cut down very, very much. Like Absolutely. it goes by really, really quickly compared to any of the other Assassin's Creed games that I played. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone will remember like what you're talking about. Those those screens where you're just in this void of space and you're just left running around for two minutes. I'd use that time to just be like, I, I always fired arrows in that. Right, I would jump around, yeah. and spin around, I'd be shooting arrows, like yeah. kind of warming up. I'm like that's how you're right. I totally, I totally forgot about that. How long that took until I remember that. That I'd be like, yeah. well, I, I guess I'll just warm myself up, right? Like that's all I can do. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm really sure just, we're all yeah. all guilty about this, but like you just pull up your phone, you go on Twitter, you scroll and everything. Now, especially in, in Valhalla, by the time I pull up my phone, open it up and go to Twitter, I'm already back in the game. And I'm like, okay, why did I even pick this up? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, and, th and that's the one thing we really have to look forward to with how fast this console is and with quick resume is because now you think of what's capable, like what the studios have in front of them in terms of hardware and what they could work on for future titles. Like Dan mentioned earlier, you're really not going to um, see the full potential of these consoles in a year, in maybe two years from now. But when a studio has real time to develop a, a game specifically for something like the Series X, and you're thinking of like the immersion that they could really build into it because they don't have to deal with those load times at all yeah um, and, and to me that is like mind-blowing in terms of what we have coming forward to us uh and what we could look forward to like halo and free yeah. multiplayer I which actually, is dope halo. yes I, I i'm gonna get your inputs on halo infinite um you know not launching with the console and how we think the console will perform overall mm -hmm. but let's let's just take a quick break and then we'll come back with more a discussion about the xbox series x